the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you're looking for a good side, there isn't one. <laughs> well, it's good to be with you this morning. Good to be with you. Does it feel good to be here today? Yes. Feel good? Well, why don't you just turn to the person beside you and say, it's good to be here today. It's good to be here today. <laughs> It's good to have choir come on down, too. Today, as we look at the celebration of the baptism of our Lord, it's a Sunday that invites us to look at our own baptisms and, and what it means as we live out our baptismal promises. And I want to do that, but I want to do that in a different way. I want to do that by stories. And the first story... The first story comes from, oh, about 1974 in South Africa. Apartheid is it, it, at its zenith. And, and there was a man there, Judge Jan Christian Oliver. He, he was in the cat bird seat, you see, because he was a judge, that meant he had power, he had prestige, and, and he had pension. And that's all good. That's all good. And Holy Week that year, a black pastor named Isaiah came up to the judge and asked him if he would worship with his church on, on Monday, Thursday. Now that doesn't sound like such a big deal to, to most of us, I'm sure. I, I know I'm driving you crazy trying to get me with a camera, but bear with me. <laughs> But, but what you have to understand is at that time, in that country, it was not legal for white people and black people to worship in the same church. But Judge Oliver was a good man. And, and he knew in his heart that apartheid was a system that was deeply flawed. And so he did the courageous thing. He went to Pastor Isaiah's church, and he was sitting in, in the pews. And, and then it came time for, for what we do on Monday, Thursday. It was time to wash some feet. Not one of my favorite moments, I might add, but, but it was time to do that. And, and the first person who was invited up was the matriarch of the parish. Every parish has one. And, and Pastor Isaiah knelt down and washed her feet. And then he kissed her on the cheek and said, go in peace, my child. The next person who came up was a young girl who was crippled. She was in a wheelchair. And, and Pastor Isaiah's daughter came up and, and knelt down and washed the feet of this crippled child. And then Pastor Isaiah kissed both of them and said, go, go in peace, my children. The next person who was invited up was a woman named Maria, Maria Fortune. And Maria was not just another member of the parish. She was a woman who had been a servant in Judge Oliver's house. For 30 years, she had cooked his meal cleaned his house, done his laundry, cared for his children. And Pastor Isaiah invited Judge Oliver to come forward to wash Maria's feet. There were gasps, as you can imagine. Judge Oliver came forward, and he knelt down and he took Maria's feet in his hands. And what he saw were feet that were tired and calloused. Tired and calloused from caring for his family. From doing the hard lifting in his house. And he felt ashamed. And then he looked in her face. And what he saw was a child of God. A woman who deserved to be loved. And so he washed her feet, and then he kissed them. And everyone in that church cried. 
except for the journalist who was there, who wrote in the newspaper the next day about Judge Oliver kissing the feet of a black woman in a black church. And, and he lost his power and his prestige, his position, and his pension. But he saved his soul. And he sowed the seeds for what would bring down apartheid. Flash forward. Oh golly, about 30 odd years. And I am the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral. And again, let's take a look at Holy Week. Monday, Thursday. My favorite night because I have to wash feet. Feet are not the best part of the human body. I do not want touching people's feet. I don't want anybody touching mine. But Monday, Thursday, we have to do that. Now, the cathedral, we did it with decency and order, and the choir sang in Latin. It was lovely. Nobody knew what in the world they were singing, but they, they sang in Latin. It was all quite grand. And, and so the time came for us to wash feet. And, and I, I think somewhere in the warden's handbook, it says that it's the warden's job to have their feet washed on uh, uh, Monday, Thursday services. So the wardens came up. And, and I sucked it up, and I knelt down, and, and I washed their feet. And, and the choir was saying in Latin, and it was wonderful. And, and then as I got up, there was a woman standing in the aisle behind me. She was a street person who had come in to the church. And she said, I want to have my feet washed. I need to have my feet washed. Well, the size people were ready to kind of move her off, but I took the chair that the wardens had sat in and took it down, and, and she sat down. And, and I took the bowl with the water and the soap. The awkward moment was when she took her pantyhose off. <laughs> <laughs> But when all was prepared, I knelt down to wash her feet. And as I looked at her feet, what I saw were feet that were full of sores. I mean, oozy sores. And, and I looked at, at her face, and I saw pain. And I saw fear. And, and I washed her feet. And then she looked at me, and she said, now I am clean. Now I can go to my God. And, and two weeks later, I buried her. There, there is a, a Zulu saying, which is, I am, I exist, because you see me. Not, not because you see me standing. Anybody can do that. But because you see me for who I am, and am for what I am. Not just somebody who wears stupid hats and, and walks up the aisle looking like a big cheese. But that you see me as a human being with all of my hopes and my dreams, with, with the things that I do well and with my faults, with my faith and with my doubts. When you see me, as that person, then I exist. And when I see you for who you are, then you exist to me in a very real and powerful way. I am, I, I exist, because you see me. One last story. A couple of years ago, I was in Tanzania. I was one of 24 bishops who had been invited to go to Dar es Salaam uh, to have conversations that hopefully would help to bring peace to our Anglican communion because we have issues. Well, we gathered in Dar es Salaam, which is sort of a harbor of hope. And 
it was a difficult time because as you can imagine, when you bring 24 bishops together, you're going to have a problem because we are the problem. Um, and, and, no, really, we are. And, and everyone wanted to be right. Everyone wanted their opinion to be the accepted one and their point of view to be the one that would win the day. And so we spent a few days talking at one another, not listening to one another, and it was going nowhere. And so we took some time off, and most of us went out into the slums of Dar es Salaam to be with reality for that country. And while I was walking there, uh, a man came up to me, a young man, and he said, you're a bishop, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. I was kind of dressed like that. And he said, when she comes to my home, my mother's dying. So I went with him to his home, which, which was an interesting place because it had three walls, not four. It had no roof. It had no door, it had no windows. And the floor was a dirt floor that smelled of feces and had urine. And what was left of his mother was lying on a mat in the dirt. So I went in and I knelt down in the feces and the urine and I held her hand. And for about half an hour, we prayed. I prayed for her, she prayed for me. And what I saw was a woman of enormous courage. She was wasted away, but she had enormous courage. When we got to, to the end of the prayer, she took my hands in hers and pulled herself off the ground. And she did what is common in Africa, but not in Canada. She kissed my ring. And she said, now I can die in peace. Because you are here, I know God is here with me. Because you have prayed with me, I know God loves me. <coughs> Most of the bishops had experiences like that over our, our couple of days in the slums in Dar es Salaam. When we got back together, everything was changed because we saw ourselves differently. We saw what we do as bishops differently. Everything had changed. And, and that meeting became an Anglican love hymn. And over the last few years, that group of bishops has made extraordinary progress in terms of changing the conversations between bishops around the world. We existed to one another in a different way because we saw one another differently. I want to suggest to you that, that every time there is baptism performed in this place, promises are made that, that we're going to continue with the apostles' teaching and the breaking of bread and the prayer. If we're going to do that, when we mess up, we're, we're, we're going to turn to the Lord and say we're sorry. We say we're going to proclaim the good news. We're going to do that. And, and we say that we're going to look for the face of Jesus and love one another and we're going to work for justice and peace and all is going to be good and, and wonderful. Because our baptism, it's, it's not just about getting done so we got an insurance policy. We're signing on as a group of people to change the world and we forget that. We forget that in our baptism, we were commissioned. We were commissioned to the priesthood of all believers. We were commissioned to go out and to transform the world in Jesus' name. We were commissioned to create a kingdom of justice and peace for all God's children. We were commissioned to create a world where there is room for everyone in the choir. And we forget that. And, and I want to suggest to you 
that if you remember nothing else from this sermon today, remember that as we live out our faith, as we live out our baptismal promises, it is all about how we look at one another, how we see one another. Because if we see one another as people deserving of love, then we will treat one another with love. If we see one another as people who deserve to be forgiven, then we will not withhold forgiveness. If we see one another as people who are deserving of justice, then we will act justly. I am, I exist, because you see me. You exist because I see you. And that changes everything.